Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the Autumn Morning Button Cowl. This is a beautiful, super easy cowl to work up. And we are using a chunky, kind of open lace fan stitch sequence here. You can see it against my table there. And we're using just some really basic stitches, just some double crochets and some chains are all you need to know to work this up. I'm gonna go through and show you how to do each stitch as well. But we're using really basic stitches and it simply just wraps around you like this and then just buttons with a very large wood button. And you can see uh, the lace also creates this really lovely scallop along the edge here as you wear it. You can also wear it in a variety of ways, and I have a lot of photos on the Fiberflux blog if you'd like to see the different ways to kind of style your cowl. So let's get started. Okay, so our finished cowl measures about 11 inches wide. Now, these are approximate measurements uh, depending on your tension. If you substitute yarn, etc., your dimensions may change a little bit. But it's about 11 inches wide, and if we open it up, it is um, approximately 42 inches long. And we've used a large 2 inch Y, this is a very large button, uh, to secure it. Because it's um, this really pretty chunky lace, it creates large decorative holes. So you need a pretty substantial button to hold your cowl together. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a 9 millimeter crochet hook. A ruler or a tape measure is helpful but not necessary. You also need a large button. This is a very large 2 inch wide button and I like how it has these large holes because we're going to be using a bulkier yarn and that will be easier to get the yarn through these holes. You'll also need a tapestry needle and the yarn I'll be using for this project is Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick. This is a yarn I use a lot and I'm going to be using two balls of this yarn. If you need to substitute yarn, each one of these balls of yarn is 106 yards. So you'll need a total of 212 yards approximately for this project if you'd like to replicate the dimensions that I'll be uh, making mine with. Um, and the colorway that I'll be using is called mustard. And if you are unsure about what weight or thickness yarn, just look for something on your yarn label that recommends a 9 millimeter crochet hook uh, for a similar yarn weight as well. Okay, so to begin we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So to make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. Our cowl has a starting chain of 28. Now if you want to change the width, just know this is a multiple of 6 plus 4. So if you're unfamiliar with multiples, just do 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 and so forth until you get the width that you want. And then add 4 more chains onto that, okay? So 6 plus 4 is our multiple. Okay, so we're, uh, we have a starting chain though of 28. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and twenty-eight. So here's our starting chain. And you want to make it, make it fairly loose. If you're having trouble, I know some of you um, have asked me before about your tension and that you're concerned about tightness. If you're having trouble getting your starting chain uh, fairly loose, go up a hook size. So this is a nine millimeter, just go up to maybe like a 10 millimeter crochet hook just for your starting chain and then switch back to the nine millimeter for the rest of your project. Just as a tip if, if you're having trouble with uh, a tight uh, starting chain. Okay, so let's begin row one. In the sixth chain from the hook, we're going to work our first little fan. Okay, so this loop here does not count. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, and six. So in this chain right here, we're going to work two double crochet, chain three, 
to double crochet. Okay, so to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. That's a double crochet. So once again, we're gonna do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. So let's make one more. So that was one, this is our second double crochet. Then chain three, one, two, three, and then in that same chain, work two more double crochet. And this will create our first fan of our row. Then all of our subsequent fans will be built off of this row of fans that we're creating now, okay? So it should look like this. You have your two double crochets, your chain three, that makes that arc of the fan, and then two more, okay? So then what we're gonna do is get a little bit more yarn. You'll find with these large hooks and this chunky yarn, you're gonna be cruising through your yarn pretty quickly. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is skip five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we're gonna do the same thing in this next chain. So one, two, three, four, five, we're skipping that, and then in that sixth chain, we're gonna do the same thing. So once again, two double crochet, one, two, chain three, one, two, three, and then two more in that same chain. Okay, so fan two is complete. You can see it's looking pretty and chunky and lacy already, okay? So then what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're gonna skip five chains. One, two, three, four, five, and in that chain after that, that sixth chain, we're gonna do the same thing. Two double crochet, one and two, then chain three, one, two, three. Then two more double crochet, all in that same chain. When you put lots of stitches in one chain, it sort of crowds it and it creates this lovely fan shape. It's kind of like pushing everything open. Okay, so back to our chains. Let's count five more chains. One, two, three, four, five, and in the chain after that, that sixth chain, do the same thing. Two double crochet, one, and two, and then one, two, three chains, and then two more double crochets all in that same chain. I really love these kind of fan stitches, these really simple fan stitches, because you get a lot of beautiful lacy texture and as you can see when we when working on our row it's very easy to do with very simple basic stitches that's why I love these kind of stitches okay so we're gonna work until we get to our last four stitches our chains rather so one two three four we have four chains left on our row so then what we're gonna do is skip three, one, two, three, and in that very last chain, we're just gonna work one double crochet and that will finish off our row, row one. So this is what row one should look like. Now, if you didn't change the multiple and had the same starting chain as me, you should have one, two, three, four fans across, okay? So let's move on to row two. Okay, so row two, in my opinion, is even easier than row one. So all we're gonna do to transition from row one to row two is chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. Now, in the Fiberflux blog, on, in the written pattern, I refer to these spaces. See the tops of each one of these fans is a space. Um, I refer to these as the chain three space because that's the space we created when we made this chain three in between these groups of double crochets. So see these spaces? We're gonna be working our next row of fans into each one of these spaces, okay? So you don't have to do any more counting of chains. It's very easy, you just look for the next space and work your fan into that, okay? So the very first space we come to, that chain three space, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Two double crochet, one, and two, and then once again, chain three. One, two, three, and then two double crochet, all in that same chain three space. One, and two. 
So we've just created the space, you know, for the next row as well. All right, hop over to that next space, that next chain three space and do the same thing. Two double crochet, one and two. Get some more yarn. Like I mentioned before, we're zipping through the yarn. Okay, so two double crochet, then chain three. One, two, three, then two double crochet. All in that same chain three space. Okay, just like that. And see how the fans are stacking on top of one another? It's looking very lovely. Okay, so next space, same thing. Two double crochet. then a chain three. One, two, three, then two double crochet. One, and two. Okay, we have our next fan. And then our final fan of this row, we're going to do the same thing. Two double crochet, one, and two, Work a chain three. One, two, three, and then two double crochet. All in that same chain three space. Okay, just like that. So once again, you should have four of these lacy fans all the way across. Now, to finish off the row, what we're gonna do is locate that turning chain. So remember that turning chain from the previous row? Um, now, because we have fans, now if you look at this, they're kind of open like this. So it kind of like pushes this churning chain off to the side. So you might have to look for it a little bit, but it's that last space off to the side there. Let me get my hook back in there. So all you're going to do to finish off the row is work a double crochet right into the turning chain space. So just right into that space, work a double crochet. Okay, and that finishes off row two. So super easy, right? Okay, so for the rest of your cowl, what you're gonna do is repeat row two. So this row we just did, you're just gonna repeat it over and over and over, basically until you run out of yarn. Or, you know, if you want it a certain length, if you want it to be really snug around your neck, you might wanna make yours a little bit shorter. If you want it to be very, very long, like a really lovely, um, infinity scarf or even a standard like a regular scarf you can um, just keep going and going okay so I'm gonna keep repeating row two and we're gonna rejoin in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to finish off your cowl and to also get your button on there as well okay and you can already see how pretty that's gonna look okay so I'm gonna keep repeating row two and we'll rejoin and we'll finish up our cowl when you're ready to join on a new ball of yarn, all you have to do, see I just have a little bit of yarn left here, um, maybe like two feet or so, but um, just cut, if you have an excess amount, but not enough to begin a new row, just cut the yarn, and see I just had a little bit here, and then fasten that off, just like that. Then you can grab your new ball of yarn, and once I locate the end here, there we go. And then that stitch, that very last stitch you did, you can just insert your hook back in there and give yourself a little bit of tail to um, allow enough to weave in later. You don't want it to be too short. It's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. So all I did was um, just brought the new yarn through. That last stitch worked, and then you can just tie it right on. And then we'll weave this in later. I'll show you how to do that. Then what you'll do is get your yarn tails out of the way here. Reinsert your hook back into that last stitch, bring up a loop, and then you're ready to begin the next row. So go ahead and chain three. And then you can turn and then just keep working on your stitches, okay? And then later on, we'll weave that in, okay? Now there's other ways to join yarn if you're switching colors or you have to start on a new ball. But um, this is the way I like to do it. I just like to simply break the yarn, tie the new piece on and keep going and weave the ends in layer. If you have a preferred method of joining yarn, definitely feel free to do that instead. 
All right, I'm just putting that last stitch in to our button cowl, and then it's complete. So we're just going to fasten off with our yarn. Now, I already went ahead and wove in the other ends, but we can weave this last in, end in together. So what you'll want to do is grab your tapestry needle. Just thread it. Now this yarn is pretty bulky, so you, I like to give it a twist. Kind of wraps it up a little bit nice so you can thread that tapestry needle. Okay, so we're just going to go in one direction with our tapestry needle, like so. Then we're going to come back in the other direction. Just lock that tail in the best you can. And then you can just grab your scissors and trim. Give it a little tug. Then kind of straighten everything out. Okay. So the main crocheted part is complete. Now we're going to add our button, and I'm going to show you how to position that button. Okay, so when we're ready to add the button, just need to grab our button. A ruler will be helpful, uh, your tapestry needle and your scissors. I went and cut a piece of, oh, it's about 16 inches or so. It's good to have a little extra, uh, so just a strand of yarn, and that's what we use to sew our button on. And when you bring the yarn through these loops, it will match once it's on the piece. Okay, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and put the cow on and just kind of figure out where you want the button. Everybody kind of likes their button to uh, secure in a different spot. Uh, but what I went ahead and did was, okay, if you look at your cow, you'll notice the edge where we started, which is this edge, is flat. The edge where we left off is sort of, uh, has this nice little scallop. This is the edge that we want to be on top when we wrap the cowl around ourselves, and this will make more sense in just a moment. So, if we look at it this way, as if we're wrapping it, just kind of wrap it in, so it's like crisscrossing across your chest, like that. See, your neck and head would be up here, okay? I went ahead and located where I want, I put it on and I located just where I want that button to go and then marked it with a stitch marker. So now that we look at the edge, now remember I pointed out this bottom is smooth where we began, or straight rather. Um, so if we go up about, that's about 10 inches up and about an inch or two over. Now to get a complete uh, diagram of this, just hop on the Fiberflex blog to where the written pattern is and, you, and I'll show you the exact measurements <clears throat> and where the button exactly goes if, you, if you're kind of a diagram person. But basically, just go the flat edge, we're going to kind of put this scalloped edge aside for a moment. Go to the flat edge, count about 10 inches up and about, this is about 2 inches over. And that is where we're going to put our button, okay? So what you're going to do is, well, I have a stitch marker here. I'm going to go ahead and remove my stitch marker. Now, also, the reason why I um, suggested putting it on is you might not like where that button is, depending on your personal tension, uh, the size hook, the yarn that you use, etc. You might want the button to kind of uh, secure at a different location. So definitely um, try it on first before you just measure. Also, if you've made yours a little bit shorter and a little bit longer, it's going to kind of hit at a different spot as well. So just to give you a, a rough guideline, though, the 10 inches is a, is a good place to start. Um, and you can always move the button if, it, if you really don't like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the button on here. Now I went ahead and threaded my tapestry needle with that piece of yarn. And I'm just going to come up through the back and come up, leave a little tail here, and back down. Make sure you're catching it. The stitch is very open and that's going to be helpful because that's going to give us some um, sort of built-in buttonholes, but you want to make sure you're, you're uh, stitching it into a good spot and not one of the decorative holes. 
Okay, so we're just going to come up and around. I'm going to do this about three times just to get everything nice and secure. Let's go in, up, over, and back down. And we're using the same yarn, so it looks very pretty once we've gotten that sewn on. So then what we're going to do is remove our tapestry needle, and then we're just going to tie this a couple of times, get a really nice secure knot on there. Now what you can do at this point is you can trim it so that it's just these little tails are trimmed off. I'm going to go ahead and weave mine in. It's a total personal preference. This is going to face the inside against your body so it's not going to really show. I just like to weave mine in so they're totally concealed. So you can just take each tail and just do the same thing we did for our other end. Just come in one direction come back in the other direction, just like that. And then do the same thing with the other tail. Weave that in, same thing, go in one direction, come back in the other direction. Just get everything nice and neat. You'll wanna spend time with your finished work because you just spent all this time making this beautiful uh, chunky lacy cowl so you want to make sure your button is nice and neat when you put it on. Okay so let's look at our handiwork here. We have our button and then we're gonna bring the other piece around and we're gonna use one of these decorative holes as one of our buttonholes and this is a really large um, chunky lace that we've made so the button will go right through. And make sure your button is not too small either because it'll just kind of fall through the hole if it's not big enough. And it shows off this scallop beautifully. So that's it. That's how you crochet the autumn morning button cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.